welcome to the live. So today I'm going to talk about books um, that talk about bipolar disorder and they are <laughs> these. I know this is like a really large stack. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you like a one or two or three word kind of description of each one and then I'll get into the actual real descriptions of the book like the longer descriptions um in case you just want to if you're watching this on the replay like the um the IGTV then if you see one that you're interested in then you can just kind of fast forward scroll to where I talk about it on this video um so I'll get into it so FYI um this one is I'm gonna I'm gonna split this in like different videos. So these books are pretty much like for anyone, right? Whether you are someone who just wants to read a book about bipolar disorder, or say if you are a mental health professional, I'm gonna do a separate video in the future about um, bipolar disorder books specifically geared for mental health professionals. I know I do have followers here that are clinicians um, or psychiatrists. So I will, um, I'll do a separate video for that. But anyway, so TL, DW, too long, didn't watch, here we go. Heart Berries by Therese Marie Mailhot, Native American, uh, living with bipolar disorder and PTSD. Hal Dahl and Hyacinths, A Bipolar Life by Melody Mosey. Memoir, uh, author is Persian, living with bipolar disorder. When, when We Collided by Emery Lord. Young adult fiction about bipolar disorder. Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder, Understanding and Helping Your Partner by Julie Fast and John D. Preston Sidey. This is uh, self-help for someone who has a partner that is living with bipolar disorder. Rock Steady, Brilliant Advice from My Bipolar Life by Ellen Forney. Uh, this is a self-help by a cartoonist for bipolar disorder. Marbles, Mania, Depression, Michelangelo and Me by Ellen Forney. This is the author of this one, except this one is her graphic memoir about living with bipolar disorder. Under My Helmet, A Football Player's Lifelong Battle with Bipolar Disorder by Keith O'Neill. So this is a memoir. Uh, Keith is a former NFL player and he talks about his experience with finding out that he has bipolar disorder and then what it was like uh, living with it. Cracked. Not Broken, Surviving and Thriving After a Suicide Attempt by Kevin Hines. So this is a memoir about um, someone who is living with bipolar disorder and he survived jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco um, because he had intended to die. Rx by L Rachel Lindsay. This is a graphic um, memoir about the author's experience working for a medication um, like trial type company and then also finding out that she has bipolar disorder, living with it and her experience in the psychiatric hospital. Okay, so that was the TLDW. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into it here. Um, oh my goodness, this is like a large stack. So. This is a very tall stack. And um, like I said in my previous videos, um, you know, I am a therapist and one of my specialties is bipolar disorder. So it makes sense why I have so many. So I'll get into it. So the first one, Heart Berries by Therese Marie uh, Mailhot. So I mentioned this book before on other videos, I believe for um, Indigenous People Stay, that live, this was one of the books and it, it looks small, it is small, but there's a lot packed in here. So for this one, the author is Native American. Um, it does, I believe, uh, take place in the Pacific Northwest, so like Canada, 
area. Um, although she has, I believe, has um, moved down here at one point. So this book was, uh, this is a memoir. So this book was really, really interesting. Um, she talks about her experience, not just, you know, with the diagnosis, but um, actually being Native American, what that experience is like, all the hardships and everything that they go through. Um, interestingly, her mother was a social worker and um, she talks about her kind of what happened um, within her family. She does have a traumatic a trauma history. So actually, in addition to uh, living with bipolar disorder, she also um, was diagnosed with PTSD. And the way that it was written in here, it sounds like the treatment that she got for the PTSD is EMDR. Um, so this was a really, um, a really good book. I, I highly, um, I highly recommend it. If you want to know other, uh, books, um, by Native American authors, definitely check out that Past to Life, uh, for Indigenous Peoples Day. So that's Heart Berries by Therese Marie Mailhut. Okay. The next one, Haldol and Hyacinths, A Bipolar Life by Melody Mosey. I am halfway through this, so I'm still reading this one. Um, so I love the cover. And so this one is by Melody and she talks about how she was born during the Islamic Resolution, raised by her Persian parents, moved to like middle, middle America um, in Ohio. Um, the parts that I've read is she does talk about her experience um, going into the psychiatric hospital, what the support looked like from her husband, as well as her experience with her family. So there's some, there's definitely a lot of cultural stuff, which is great. And um, according to the back of the book, uh, she was encouraged to keep her illness a secret by both her family and an increasingly callous medical establishment. Um, so this is pretty much her memoir and I'm halfway through and I'm really, really liking it. So, so far, would recommend. Um, the next book, When We Collided by Emery Lord. So this is one of the books that led to the creation of this podcast. So if you know, if you, or if you've watched previous videos, you know that one of my favorite uh, genres is YA fiction. And this is that. And originally when I had done um, a lot of Google searches about like YA books about bipolar disorder, this one came up a lot. So back in 2018, I believe I read it and I was not disappointed. It's a really good book. And keep in mind, this is a fiction, right? However, the portrayal is pretty accurate as far as what one type of experience or what someone with bipolar disorder may be experiencing because it's a spectrum right so within this um talks about the main character who is living with bipolar disorder what her experience was like with that um how she feels about medication um and then it also talks about friendships and like relationships and the cool thing too is what's heavily put forward with with this story is also that like that diagnosis is not her sole identity. That isn't the only thing that define her, defines her. She's other things, a daughter, a friend, girlfriend, painter, given the cover of this book. So this book was really, really good. I really liked it. And like I said, this was actually one of the inspirations for the creation of the whole podcast. So that is When We Collided by Emery Lord. The next one, Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder, Understanding and Helping Your Partner by Julie A. Fast and John D. Preston Psy D. So this is a self-help. Now, Julie, um, she is living with bipolar disorder. She writes like a ton of blogs. She's also written a lot of other books. So she has lived experience um, with the diagnosis. And then for this, she looks like she also collaborated with a PsyD. So that's a, a doctorate of psychology, uh, pretty much like a clinical psychologist. So this book is great because this is more geared towards the partner. And so it will go through a lot of what that partner may be experiencing, maybe like the conflicts or the hardships. Um, it does have some nice little education just in general about the diagnosis, about the disorder, as well as medications. But the bulk of the book is takeaways, 
things that can be implemented, especially like the communication aspect, like helping them prep like a what works list for the diagnosis um, for that person in their diagnosis so that you're prepared for future episodes. So this book is really, really good. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. I mean, this one's been like a top seller for a really, really long time. I think since like it came out. So if you um, or you know of anyone, you know, that has a partner who's living with bipolar disorder, I highly, highly recommend this because it is, it is not just informative, but it's actually like useful and you can you can take away concepts and exercises and literal tasks, things to do that really just will help you in the daily life. So that is Loving Someone with Bipolar Disorder by Julie A. Fast and John D. Preston D. The next one is probably one of my favorite authors out there. Um, so we've got two books by her. So the first one is Rock Steady, Brilliant Advice from My Bipolar Life by Ellen Forney. So Ellen Forney is a cartoonist who's living with bipolar disorder and this is the self-help. So, and she's a cartoonist. So this is written in the format of a graphic novel, right? Um, this makes a diagnosis that can be very, very confusing, highly understandable because it goes through just some education on like what the diagnosis looks like. I love the little merry-go-round. So when we explain episodes, right, it's not just highs and lows, there's everything in between. It's also how we diagnose it. Um, and then she also has some like coping skills, different things, um, what to do. There's like a mood, mood chart, tips on like keeping track of your mood, overspending, um, different practices, does talk about the different treatments for bipolar disorder. And then also um, does help with stigma by talking about um, famous people, um, such as like celebrities, mood disorder, hall of fame, um, that well-known people that do live with the diagnosis. And so just d bipolar disorder, it's, it's actually quite common. Okay. Um, so, and it's probably even more common than what we think because the report is probably not the exact census. Cause there may be people who have it that don't know, or just I don't know, aren't taking those surveys to say like, that's me. So this is the self-help. Um, and then she also did a graphic memoir about her experience. And um, when she was diagnosed, which I believe was like well into adulthood, what that was like for her. There's some talk about her experience with therapy, um, medication, um, and the drawings are just, I mean, she's a cartoonist, so it's just so amazing. Um, so I highly, highly recommend this book because, um, especially if you want to read like more of a self-help type of book, like like her other book, it, it does a really great job of um, explaining the diagnosis, but ultimately this is um, her lived experience. The next one is Under My Helmet, A Football Player's Lifelong Battle with Bipolar Disorder by Keith O'Neill. Sorry for the ring light. So this book's really good. And um, so Keith, he is a former um, NFL player. So he did play, he played for the Cowboys and I, feel, I believe a few other, oh, and the Colts. So, so he talks about his experience with um, just his life. And what's interesting is it kind of the way it's written, it's like you can get a sense of the timeline because in, in, the first part of the book, um, he doesn't know yet that he has it. And he wasn't diagnosed till like much later, like I think either towards the end of his career or like after. So unfortunately, like it took a while for him to get diagnosed. And unfortunately, that also isn't that uncommon. So it does lay out the overall timeline, a nice picture. And he's very upfront and vulnerable talking about what exper his experience was um, with different symptoms. And um, I think this book is great because, you know, it's a, he's an athlete that's talking about mental illness and um, a male, you know? So I think it really kind of combats some of, you know, what we know as far as, you know, athletes maybe not talking about it so much. I think it's, it's, come, it's become better, like in recent years. Um, and then also males, like males being open and sharing their story. Um, since leaving um, the NFL, he's become an advocate 
for talking about mental health and mental illness. So highly recommend this book, Under My Helmet by Keith O'Neill. The next one, Cracked Not Broken, Surviving and Thriving After a Suicide Attempt by Kevin Hines. So um, you may have heard of Kevin Hines if you've watched there was a documentary about the Golden Gate Bridge um, and just like the high suicide rate um, at the bridge because people were using that as the spot to um, to jump. Um, I believe since then there's been like some sort of net that's created. It's like a net that's like extended outward because um, so many people do try to jump off that bridge. And and so, so this is um, his story. He talks about his experience and he was adopted. Um, his experience with bipolar disorder and how he wanted to die. So he jumps off the Golden Gate Bridge. This is like early 2000s. And miraculously, like he actually survived. Very, very few people survive to tell the story of what it's like to jump. So he also um, has been to the psychiatric hospital multiple times. And this is... um. This is a really, I feel like raw upfront and really good book talking about just like suicidal ideation, all the symptoms, you know, really having like um, a rough life. Although his, he does talk about some of the positives with his adoptive family, but, but yeah, so he is probably one of the biggest like mental health advocates out there um to where he made it his life's purpose to do speakings like all throughout the year different places talking about his own story and he's also been in a lot of documentaries including the one um about the golden gate bridge so that is crack not broken by kevin hines the last one um is rx a graphic memoir by rachel Lindsay. um so this one it is a graphic, like a kind of like a graphic novel sense. So, you know, it's all like pictures and everything. Um, so in this, the author um, talks about her experience taking medication. So that's why it's heavily based on the medication stuff. Um, taking medication while at the same time working for like a medic company which was like kind of a trip for her um on top of experiencing um bipolar like living with bipolar disorder and um being admitted into a psychiatric hospital so she does share her story in what all of that was like and then as also her like reservations i believe um regarding the healthcare system and y'all be honest yeah like it's a broken system like the healthcare system um so this book is really good it's like so heavy um so it's a bulky one but it's it's really good this is actually um i actually need to return this this is someone else's uh, that i've been borrowing for the longest time uh, because i like it so yeah so that is rx by rachel Lindsay. so um these are the books if you jumped on late here deck is bigger than my head here we go all these okay so um hopefully this was informative or helpful if this is if you do like any of these books um you know and you want to like just keep these in mind you know for later purchase or check out at the like local library um if you're watching this on the IGTV, you can bookmark this like little bookmark symbol. Um, you can bookmark this video. That way it's saved uh, for you to watch again later or reference later. Like I said, I'll be doing a video in the future um, for bipolar disorder books for mental health professionals, whether it's, um, I mean, predominantly say, like therapists because I'm a therapist, although um, I do have one that's really, really good and it was written by a psychiatrist and I think actually it's kind of helpful for us therapists to read it. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, and then the next live will be February 1st. So it'll be my January reading wrap up. Um, also, I'm super excited because I'm going to start rolling out the podcast episodes for 2021. Um, I'm thinking and I'll, I'll make a 
a post on this, but I'm thinking um, the one for January will probably be coming out on Tuesday. And that one is with an author. So it's a guest episode, an author uh, who wrote a memoir and her experience um, being a caregiver for uh, her spouse after her spouse uh, suffered a very unexpected uh, medical incident. Um, so really, really looking forward to that. It was a pleasure to have her on. So um, definitely, if you haven't already, follow our platforms that the podcast is on, which is YouTube. So the Books Between Sessions, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Stitcher. So uh, definitely follow or subscribe to those. That way you're immediately notified and you know um, as soon as it goes live and you don't have to like stick around or like check back for like the Instagram, my Instagram posts, but it just makes it easier. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Hopefully um, you have a good rest of the weekend. All right, take care. Bye.